today's video, I'll be showing you how I did my kind of 3D white on white design, almost like a porcelain type design here. I've done a similar one to this in the past and I used the mosaic snow white for that, but I had to apply uh, two layers of it to get the thickness that I wanted. This is a great product and it is thicker uh, than gel polish, but it still wasn't as thick as I wanted it for this purpose here. So I'll show you what I did to kind of thicken it up and uh, make it paintable using some 3D paste, which is this uh, HD elastic gel that I got from uh, Reforma. They sell it on, I'm wondering if this is actually a different um, company as far as a different product from a different company that they just sell on their site. Uh, but this is the paste. It's basically a um, mixture of acrylic powder, uh, gel, and pigments. And it's quite thick. It's got like a doughy kind of consistency. And it was uh, created really to make 3D nail art like flowers and other designs where you didn't want to, if you didn't want to use liquid and uh, powder, traditional acrylic powder and liquid, uh, this would be an option. You would simply take some of this and uh, take a small little dollop of it and uh, then manipulate it with a 3D art brush and a little bit of alcohol or cleanser to create your designs. And you could move it around and manipulate it all that you want until you're actually ready to cure it into place. That was the great thing about this product because it's part, part gel. So this is a 3D paste. Everybody was asking me about it. They hadn't heard about it. Um, I did check on the Reforma uh, website, the shopnailart.com, uh, for this product, and while they have other colors, I did not see the white available any longer. But there are other companies that uh, make this uh, 3D stuff. Uh, Bundle Monster calls it modeling gel, and it's basically the same thing. Theirs is a uh, slightly firmer product. Uh, not quite, yeah, this is a little bit thicker than the other, but you can still do the same thing that I did. I'll show you in just a second what I did with the uh, white gel paint and the paste. Another um, company that has it is Nail of Queen. They call it their Volume 3D Gel, um, and it's in white as well. They have different colors, but uh, I was sent a sample and this is what I got. Theirs is uh, a little bit looser, a little more creamy, um, and I'll go ahead and put some links to where you can buy uh, these products. Like I said, the place where I got my, uh, what I used on uh, this nail, it doesn't look like they actually offer the white any longer and it looks like they're discounting their current colors just uh, probably to get them out of stock. Um, not sure about that but you can contact them and see if um, if they can get in the white if that's what you're interested in. So again um, I've worked with the gel paint before and again a great product. I love the mosaic uh, gel paints but they were not quite as thick as I wanted them for this purpose. So what I did is I took a little bit, and I'm going to use the Reforma because that's what I used on this nail, and that's what I'll show you um, uh, mixing it up. So again, I just took a little bit of the white, and I put it on my tile. You want to do up just enough to do your manicure. Actually, I ended up having a lot more than I really needed. And then I'm going to take some of the uh, white gel paint. You could use gel polish for this if you wanted to, but I just chose to do the white because it's um, more opaque. And then I added just enough of the gel paint to just loosen up that paste a little bit and actually make it paintable, you know, spreadable with a paintbrush. 
So I combine that really well. And in doing this, you get the opacity, but you still see how that's kind of thick, but it's paintable with a brush now. Whereas if you just tried to use that 3D gel, you wouldn't actually be able to use your smaller detail brush to paint that on. And again, I use this because I wanted to do only one layer rather than several to get the, the thickness of the design that I wanted. Actually, I'm going to add just a teensy bit more paste. Now you can make the paste yourself. Um, I know that if you work with acrylics, I've seen on some European pages where they call it gum paste. And again, it's simply mixing acrylic powders, clear and or white, and your gel. You do colored gel, clear gel, whatever gel that you would like to use. You can even use gel polish. And you only really want to do up what you're going to use in that one application. It doesn't really store that well when you do it yourself, which obviously if that's the case, and they're probably adding more to these prepackaged things than I know about, but I do know that that's the main ingredients, gel and acrylic powder. All right, so I didn't have any stiletto tips to... Um, show this so I took one of my square samples and tried to get it into got an, a nice almond shape here but you'll you get the idea this is two coats of the IBD whipped cream gel polish cured and I went ahead and I took off the sticky layer uh, I want to prevent this from spreading any more than it absolutely needs to as I explained to some other people, I did flash cure as I moved along in my design just because I did want to make sure that none of that uh, spread around. I wanted to go ahead and keep the lines uh, exactly where I wanted them. So um, I'm using my Crystal Nails um, Zero long brush here, uh, quite delicate uh, kind of liner brush. And we're just going to start our design here. I just started with uh, some teardrop shapes. Um, basically, it's just a bunch of teardrop shapes, kind of elongated teardrops. So, all right. Now at this point, this is where I would usually go ahead and flash cure again, just to make sure that those lines stayed put. So that's what I'll do. And again, it's just a couple of seconds. I'm using the LED lamp. Both of these products cure in the LED. Um, whichever you get as far as ordering yours, you would go ahead and use the manufacturer's suggestion for UV or LED. And again, just to make sure that those are locked in place.
All right, so our design has been cured in the uh, LED, so it's locked in place. And I don't know why my camera will not focus. Uh, must be the brightness of the... Okay, so once again, we're cured. Now we're ready to go ahead and top that with a very thin layer of top coat. And uh, we do the thin layer because we don't want to... We want it to kind of look like it's... Um, You can see the difference. It looks like it's just sitting on top, but you want it to kind of blend in and make it look like it's like a, a pattern on a china, on some china. So that's what we're going for here. Just a very thin layer. You can use any top coat that you like. I'm just using my uh, Accents uh, No Wipe top coat. And again, I'm just doing a thin layer right over the top. If it gets too thick, just kind of move it around until you get it to a nice, even, thin layer all around. All right, once you have your thin coat on, all your air bubbles are out of the way, go ahead and cure that in so your lamp. There we have our 3D um, white on white kind of porcelain or china type um, design. And we'll move on to our um, jeweled nail. The jeweled nail actually took longer for me at least because when I was playing around, I was actually doing it on my own nail and could not decide what design that I wanted. Um, and since the design is over an acrylic enhancement, I went ahead and applied them into some clear hard gel. Since this is going to be, uh, when I go in for a fill, it's going to be filed off. I didn't have to worry about using a soak off. But you can use soak off. You can use... Um, I wouldn't suggest using glue because unless you absolutely are perfect with your application, uh, you, there's just going to be too much moving around with it to uh, use super glue. You can also use a gelish base. That's actually my favorite way uh, to use it. Now, um, I did use the micro beads, the um, caviar beads. This just happens to be the um, Recollections uh, Silver. And uh, what I did is I simply took a little bit of the um, hard gel. I'm assuming uh, I used, this is a thicker viscosity, so it held those beads pretty much where I wanted them. They didn't go slipping off into the sidewalls. So um, I'm taking a little bit and I'm I'm going to place it in approximately where I would like my beads to go. Just brushing it on. And again, if you want to use, like if I were doing this on my natural nails, I would have used gelish base. To me, that's almost better than super glue. I never had any problem keeping my Swarovski crystals in place and other embellishments. So again, just get them into, just get the gel down about where you would like everything. You can always add more if you need to. And what I did first is I placed the Swarovski crystals first. So I'm going to do that. This is on a shorter nail, so oh, I'll probably use the same 
same beads here um, for I decided to mix it up I'll, you notice on my two ring fingers I have three stones here and I have four stones here I decided to just kind of mix it up see how I liked it I like both neither is bad so I used a blue these are the uh, opal essence type um, Swarovskis. I used a blue, one blue, and two, uh, three green. And I used the two of the uh, SS8. And uh, those are the two at the bottom right here. These are the uh, SS8 ones right here. The blue one is, let's see, the smaller blue one is an SS7. So just... I've noticed, um, you've seen me do jeweled stuff in the past, and I love my um, little tool here I got from Nail Labo. It's got a sticky little end on it. Um, learn from my mistake. Do not clean this with alcohol. Um, I did notice um, a, a, with a lot of kind of plastic or, or sticky type stuff, alcohol dries that out, and it becomes not sticky anymore. So mine has no tack to it anymore. Uh, I still basically use this end to push all my stuff around though. So we're just gonna take your, whatever gems that you want to use, just place it right into the, right into the gel. Push them down, get them really seated into that gel. And this is why we're like working with the gel better. You can play around and situate them pretty much anywhere that you would like. And take your time with it too. A smaller green one up here. All right, so now that you've got your crystals placed, we'll simply take our caviar beads and I'm just going to sprinkle them right into the gel. It's not going to be perfect, obviously, at first. This is where you'll just start situating them around. And this is where I use my little tool here to just start placing the beads where I want them.
All right, so once you get your beads placed where you would like them, you can go ahead and cure that in your lamp, and that's what we'll do. We'll be right back. We have our cured um, caviar beads, and they're locked in place. Now, on mine, I went ahead and used um, a little bit of hard gel over the beads, um, but for this demonstration, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just put a light, um, uh, and using, again, the small brush, because I don't really want to flood the area with um, this top coat. I just want to kind of get it down into... Uh, the crevices of those beads but I don't want to take away from the uh, texture of the beads but I do just want this kind of added protection as far as um, making them stay on the nail in the past uh, these do tend to come off pretty easily uh, if they're not either glued down or um, encased and encasing it just kind of takes away uh, from that kind of pebbly kind of appearance. So again, just a little bit of the no wipe top coat or hard gel if you're using that and just getting it into the crevices but not flooding the area. And I also don't, I did not put them, uh, in the past I have put top coat over the gems, but in this case I didn't. I'm also going around the perimeter. And that's ready to pop into the lamp and cure that as well. We'll be right back. All right, so now we have our cured gemstone and caviar bead nail. And we have our other nail right here. So as you can see, it really didn't take that long to do, um, especially this one. This one actually took a lot less time than me kind of futzing around with the um, beads on this one, um, but all for a very nice effect. I want to thank everyone who commented on Facebook and my blog and my Instagram. Uh, as always, I sincerely appreciate everyone's uh, comments, and uh, if you have any questions for me, um, go ahead and leave them down in the uh, comment section. I'll go ahead and try to get to them as soon as I, uh, as soon as I can. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and uh, until next time, I will see you guys later.